Hey folks, I'll do a quick walkthrough with you on the plumbing that I have achieved so far. So inside the tank we'll have a standard solids lifting overflow and imagine that we're all succulent fish turds. We'd exit the tank with the outbound water flow along the bottom and of course this is just mirrored on both sides, all the water from the tanks. Each set of three tanks has their own uh, main PVC drain line connects here. We're just sending it here, it's teed here, and all of this water is being pushed over to our filters. So the filters are all run in series, so it'll enter filter one, have a chance to settle out, drop down into our solids collection hole, and then there will also be, and I haven't decided if I'm going to do this in all of the filters, or maybe just the last two, but we'll have a, um, a, a piece of filter mat that that water's got to pass through. Um, on its way b before it can exit the tank. All right, so it'll flow into the next filter, same thing. We redirect it and give it another chance to settle out in each of these tanks. So uh, a decent amount of suspension time. And then all of this water will go into our series of biofilters, which I don't have assembled yet. And then ultimately the water will uh, go back into the underground sump, which you see there. So as that fish waste is settling out in these tanks, these will also be connected with a series of, of PVC drains, and those will have a valve preventing that water from coming out. And then manually, I will open the valves to flush out the solids that are collecting in the filters, and that'll be sent into our series of mineralization for the aquaponic portion, or the, uh, the plant portion of the aquaponics. These sump tanks are a mess too. As you guys can see, it's full of leaves and twigs. I gotta clean all that shit out. But yeah, so that's all I've gotten done so far. There's the IBCs I'm using for biofilters. I've got to get in there with a paint scraper and clean off some residue. I've gotta pull the plastic out of the frame and paint them and then plumb those up as well. And that's gonna be real simple. It's just gonna come, the water will flow out of that last filter and then sequentially, once again, it'll flow into a biofilter, bio out of one biofilter, into biofilter two, and so on and so forth. I've got three of them. Uh, initially, I'll start with two, and then I was considering using the third as a very, very fine solids filter, but I don't know that it's going to be necessary. Uh, or I may be able to rig, just go ahead and use those three IBC tanks as biofiltration, uh, which would, without a doubt, ensure I have plenty of biofiltration um, for these tanks. And then I could rig up a very simplified, uh, fine solids filtration just before the water returns back into the sump. So not entirely sure how that's going to go yet, but... Yeah, at this point I'm just rambling. So that's it guys, just a quick look at what we've accomplished. Uh, I need to have water going into these tanks this weekend. So yeah, we'll start filling it up this weekend. Maybe, maybe even Friday if I get everything done. But Saturday and Sunday for sure. If I've got to lay that water pipe myself, I will run it from the main road. It's like probably 300 yards up into the left into the main road. But I've got the water access point. I just need to run PVC or maybe even just some soft hose uh, to get the water down here until I can get a permanent solution. So I was going to use the pond water and I've decided against it just because the amount of time that it would take for me to pump the water from the pond is no problem. I can get a, a gasoline pump or whatever and send the water up here. But then it's got to be treated because I don't want to run the risk of having parasites and bacteria uh, from the pond and then basically starting my fish off with problems before they've even gotten settled in. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, clean tap water and maybe later down the road I'll come up with a solution. The, the biggest issue is treating the water. It would need to be UV filtered, which is fine and I can do that, but the rate at which I can run water through UV, a series of UV filters to ensure all of the parasites and bacteria are dealt with would take too much time. It would take too long for me to fill up what's going to almost be 30,000 liters of water with that method. So just use fresh water, 
um, get all our chlorine aerated out of that, uh, put in some test fish uh, right away. I'll bring fish from my home aquaponics, put them in here, get some of the ammonia going, and make sure that all of our leaks are dealt with if we have any and things like that. And then we'll be ready to receive the actual barramundi within a couple of weeks. They should be here. And we'll be ready to go. Uh, I've already told the builders that they're going to have to work around me to finish this next portion of the roof. So I've been given the green light to go ahead and start setting everything up. And they'll have to figure it out on their own as to how they're going to uh, put the trusses and things like that up. I'm not worried about it. There'll still be room to move scaffolding around or whatever they need. So they'll sort it out. It may take them a little bit of extra effort, but I've got to get things moving. So no more delays on that either. You guys will very soon see all the towers going up, all the Dutch buckets, and those will be relatively simple to construct as well. Um, just all we do is lay a bunch of PVC down to serve as drain pipes into the sumps or the, the, the return sumps and uh, fill all the buckets with hydroton and all that good stuff. So I did get the remainder of the hydroton and I've got all the stainless steel poles which go inside the tower stacks for extra stability. Like I said, the buckets are done. So I, gosh, maybe, maybe one or two, I might actually be able to get all that done before the fish show up as well, which would be phenomenal because um, then we can literally start growing things. Uh, I've got a seedling table over here as well, which I showed you guys in a previous video. And I got some, some tomatoes started, not nearly enough. Um, so most of these are beefsteak, which are from sustainable seeds. I know beefsteak is a genre, if you will, of tomatoes, but this actual variety is called beefsteak. Um, some various uh, odds and end onesies and twosies, and then a bunch of pink brandy ones. So, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.